morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here this morning. Yes. Um, just thank God for his many blessings to us. Yeah. And we just are reminded of the importance of prayer. Yeah. I know some of you, and we're going to finish the reading in time, some of you remember when we had prayer, really a week of prayer. Yes. Yes, Every church across the conference where we have it, that we can pray, whether they do it in the mornings or in the evenings. I'm hoping and praying that we get back to that, Pastor Leonardo, that every church do it, we can pray. Because I think we need more prayer now yes. than when we do it, yes. whether you believe it or not. Mm -hmm. and so we thank God for the initiative and uh, to be here this morning. Don't worry, um, Mr. Norman knows that I'm not a morning person, um, but I thank God. Not that I can't get up, but I thank God that He is still God and we can be here this morning. Amen. Um, I'm so happy about the readings that we have for this week and uh, just focusing on on prophecy of the last day. And we did the last day. And sometimes I wonder if we believe that we're in the last day. We talk it, we preach it, but do we live it? When we look at prophecy, I'm thankful for this week of prayer, reminding us and turning us back to. And so the topic for this morning is true and false prophets old and new. Let us pray. Father, we thank you once again for the presence and the power of your Holy Spirit. Yes. During this week of prayer, Lord, may we focus on praying for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit in this church, in our lives. Fathers, we go in the reading today, this morning, we ask for your divine intervention, your leading, and your direction for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. It says, true and false prophets, old and new. Is the prophetic gift limited to the past? That's the question this morning. No. And the reader, the writer for um, the reading this morning begins with the fact that after church, a teenager asked the question as to why God did not speak directly to her. Um, and sometimes we ask the same question. We know that Christ speaks to us through the word. He speaks to us through Christ and all. But sometimes, oh, Lord, why don't I hear your voice audibly? And so we ask the same question sometimes this young person asks after church. The question comes to us. Sometimes we believe that the gift of prophecy may have been watered down or not necessarily longer. But it says a gift that ceased. And that's the question this morning. And so I have two opposing views as to um, the gift. One of the, the this is ces cessationist, which means have the gift ceased, okay? And the other one is the continuationist, uh, is the gift of prophecy continuing. Yes. And so the person who talks about is the gift um, has ceased, it says that cessationists believe that spiritual gifts, such as speaking in tongues, prophecy, healing, ceased after the age of the apostles. According to their views, those were supernatural gifts meant to function as a sign in the context of the emergence of the Christian church. So just believe that once the Christian church was established, we no longer needed the gifts. That's what they believe. They deny the possibilities of a resurgence of gifts appearing, appealing to the principle of sola scriptura, which is mean the Bible and the Bible only. One, the closing of the biblical can canon. I mean, the canon is the Bible, the 66 books of the Bible. Two, the infall infallible and sufficient authority of the Bible. And three, the perfect adequacy of scriptures that guide the church. In other words, they believe that the testimony given in the closed canon of the Bible is enough to guide the church until the time of the end. Aside from teaching the word and communicating the will of God as a regular and sustained attempt, sustained ministry, however, prophets were often sent into crisis scenarios in times of hardship created either by external causes or by internal condition of apostasy. Prophets 
provided guidance on conflict and confusion in these spiritual situations, or simply brought in a special message at a certain point in the plan of salvation. Some of these prophets did not, be, did not become part of the canon. For example, we have Nathan, Abijah, and Yidu. And we find that in Second Chronicles. What the non canonical prophet said or wrote was authoritative and binding for the people of their time because the authority of a prophetic writing is grounded in its inspiration. The prophetic gift of the non canonical prophets was not given to replace the testimony of the canonical prophets, but rather to satisfy a specific need of the people of God. It was noted, however, that what such prophets taught was in harmony with God's revelation to the canonical prophets. Since the time of John the Revelator, the biblical canon had been closed and other inspired books cannot be added. The question we ask today is, have there been any prophets sent from God since the closing of the biblical canon? And could one rise up in the present or the future? And whether you believe it or not, a lot of us in the church ask that same question. Two, I think, about two weeks ago, it, we talk, it was a, the um, Spirit of Prophecy weekend. And person were asking that question. Do we still have the need for the prophetic gift in the church today? Has it stopped? The ones who talk to the views that talk about the continuation, it says that the gift of prophecy will continue until Christ comes. Amen. The Bible tells us yeah. that prophecy, a gift of prophecy, is for the edifying, the equipping, mm -hmm. so that we will come into a perfect first knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. A desirable gift. Yeah, Paul talks about We talk about the New Testament. The New Testament grants a prominent place to the gift of prophecy among the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And when we talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, sometimes in the church, we play down the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sometimes don't understand the need for the Holy Spirit even in the church Amen. and the gifts that he's given us as a people. Amen. Brethren, let me tell you, now more than ever, yes. the church needs to understand yes. what those gifts are. Yes. In order to understand what those gifts are, we need to understand who the Holy Spirit is. Amen. And sometimes I wonder if we realize that we're in the last day and we need the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to finish this work. Amen. This work needs to close. Yes. I don't know about you, but brethren, I am ready for it to be closed. Amen. And so when we talk about the gift of prophecy, so it's important for us as the church to understand where we are. It says, indeed, on one occasion, the Apostle Paul gives in first place among the ministry, most useful to the church, and on two occasions, he gives a second place, and we find that in Romans and 1 Corinthians. Moreover, he encouraged believers to eagerly desire this okay. gift. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Even though the Holy Spirit always gives us gifts as he wills, and I thank God that their gifts we can desire. And when we desire these gifts, my friends, God is more than able yes. to give us those gifts. Yes. Oh, yes. Thus Paul points out twice that God has appointed prophets within the church. What is more, he affirms that the New Testament church was built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. And I praise God that this present day church was built on the gift of prophecy. Yes. Too often in our church, brethren, we put aside the gift of prophecy. True, true, we true. throw away the writings of yes. Ellen White. Yes. And my friends, we need to pick up the books again. Amen. Amen. She had the gift of prophecy. Yes. The church was founded on the yes. gift of prophecy. Amen. It's going to close on the gift of prophecy, whether we believe it or not. Yes. And so it says, 
that we conclude that this manifestation of the gift of prophecy was not limited to the canon. So the gift of prophecy did not close at the end of Revelation chapter 22. A gift for the end times. Jesus stated that false prophets who would say that they prophesy in his name would appear. In Father and Matthew, on this earth. These false prophets will be active in the end time, showing signs and wonders, and trying to deceive even the elect. Mm -hmm. And brethren, whether you believe it or not, it says in the end, we are living in the end time, and all over here, prophet, all false prophets, even in the church. Yeah. And that's where they're going to start. And they come with all kinds of things. Sometimes I wonder if we read the same Bible. Sometimes I wonder if we go to the same church. When you listen to some, and you have false prophets. The Bible says, if it were possible, the very elect would be deceived. But I praise God this morning that the very elect will not be deceived. But it tells us so. It tells us so that the deception is going to be so strong. And that's what we must understand, that the counterfeit is going to be so close to the truth that only those who are walking with God will be able to know the difference. I thank God for the power of His Holy Spirit. That's going to keep those of us, and that means it should be all of us, who are walking with God so closely that we will not be deceived. I tell people that Satan has lived with Christ for years, we can't count. So he knows Christ inside out. And so he's going to try to deceive, but I thank God for the Holy Spirit who will teach us who God is inside out. So we will know the difference. We know the difference. Speaking practically of the end time, Joel prophetically announces the abundant outpouring of the Spirit of God. And you know what he says? He talked about, he says, your sons and your daughters, your old men and your women. So everybody, the Holy Spirit will be poured out on all classes during their time. The question is, are we ready for the outpouring? And so when we leave here this morning, I want to think as we got our jobs, are we ready? What can we do in order to be able to be prepared for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Talk about daughters and sons prophecy. How do we know that Joel refers specifically to the end time? Because this prophecy establishes the time frame for the manifestation of the spirit of prophecy. He mentions cosmic phenomena. So we know it's the end time, such as the darkening of the sun and the moon turn into blood. He also speaks of disasters on earth, which are as uh, cryptically described as blood and fire and billows of smoke. So when we understand the book of Joel, he's talking about the end time. He's talking about his time. The end time. And so let's not believe that prophecy ended some years ago. Mm -hmm. Still in the church. The church still needs it. Yes, yes. The Apostle Paul applies Joel's prophecy to the Pentecost experience, which thinks, which links the gift of prophecy to the gift of tongues. Why? Joel's prophecy of the coming prophetic gift is mentioned in the context of the early and latter rain. And I'm so thankful for that. I know. Pastor, we don't, we don't preach about a, a, a latter rain anymore in the church, you know. No, no. When I first came in the church, we talked about the latter rain yes, uh -huh. and the early rain. You don't hear them in the church anymore. No, we need to get back to I what we it. used to preach, yeah. what we used to teach. And brethren, let me tell you, we do that, we will not have them coming in and going out as soon as they come in. We need to now get back. So the latter rain experience is what we need to talk about. The former rain, the Pentecost, the latter rain, and God promises, he said he's gonna send it down in copious measures. Yes. The writer goes on, he says, autumn rain, which allows the seed to germinate and take root will come, what called early, early rain. Yes. Spring rain falls, which ripen the grain and prepared for the harvest, were called the latter rain. The Old Testament uses a phenomenon of the Palestinian agricultural circle as a symbol of the spiritual gift that God gives his people through his spirit. Friends, let me tell you something. As we read Revelation, 
Remember, in Revelation talks about um, the angel, the sprite angel came now with mighty power. My friends, the time is now when the church needs to be ready yes, for yes. the outpouring yes, of yes. the latter rain. Yes. But first we must have the former rain. Yes. We've got to make sure, and it comes with prayer. Yes. Ellen White says we must oh, pray. Yes. We must pray. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says he's going to give us the good gift. Yes. And so when we pray, he's going to do it. So that's why, let me tell you, it starts with one person. Yes. And I'm so happy, Pastor. You know, it's amazing. You see so many here this morning. I'm not going to say what I would want to say. But we see it so many here. But when we get together and serious about the pouring brethren, yes. yes. it will happen. Yes. We need a revival. Oh, yes. We need a reformation. reformation. And God is going to give it to us. Peter. And the other apostles experience the early rain. The latter rain will come with the same power of the Spirit, and the people of God will manifest the gift of prophecy yeah. in the midst. And I say, Praise God! Yes. Today, while we, the remnant who the Lord calls. Yes. Now, I don't know where you're sitting now. My Bible tells me, this reading tells me, you're confirming. We are the remnant yeah. who God calls. Oh, yeah. Now, if you don't believe that you're called, then you need to go home and go to sleep. But my friends, I believe that I am part of the remnant that God has called. Yeah. And when we believe that, there are certain things we will do, yeah. and there are some things we will not do. Yeah. Part of that remnant, my friends. Because he says, oh, and we are awake the soon return of Jesus. Yes. We are invited to experience the spiritual ladder in. Yes. This outpouring of the Holy Spirit will be more abundant than the previous one. Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be more abundant than on the day of Pentecost. Yeah, yeah. So they thought they were drunk. Yeah, yeah. They would believe. <laughs> they, they will be shouting at me from his brethren, but I said them there at Venice, we are so, we are so sophisticated that we don't let go and allow the Holy Spirit to make it look like we are drunk. It's going to be more so than we, this church, this remnant church, woo, gets the power of the lottery. Oh, man. Let me try to finish again. I read that again. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit will be more abundant than the previous one. It will make your sons and your daughters prophesy. Your old man dreams dream, and your young man see visions. Praise God. I believe that all of us left, uh, we're going to leave here this morning understanding oh, yes. more about what God desires for us. Uh, true and false prophets, then and now, old and new. And it's a gift that, that ought to be desired. It's a gift that has not ceased. Amen. And it's a gift that will go on for the end time. Amen. So may God bless us in the special way. This morning, we're going to pray, brethren. And um, we're going to pray a little differently than how we prayed for the other mornings. This morning, we want to get into a large circle. Uh, we prayed in tools yesterday. Yeah. And we prayed in different groups the other day. Yeah. We want to get into a large circle this morning. And we're going to let everyone pray who wants to pray. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. Uh, we're going to spend these moments in prayer. Yeah. But there are two, in addition to what we have here this morning, I'm going to take some prayer requests. Because I believe that there are some persons who want us to pray specifically for some situations. And we're going to call on God for those situations this morning. Is that all right? And, and, and I'm asking us to let's pray. You don't have to be uh, everlasting to be eternal. Okay? But we want, we want you to pray. Okay? And we're not going to hinder your prayers this morning. Because that's why we're here. But just be mindful that there are other persons who would want to pray. Is that all right? Amen. So we're going to go into a circle. I'm going to ask us to come into that circle shortly. And I'm going to ask us to form it a little closer around here because our dear sister Brown is, is, is in a wheelchair and we want to accommodate her. Amen. 
okay? So we want you to be mindful of that, okay? So let's, let's look at these prayer requests this morning. We're going to pray especially for insight into the prophecies of the New Testament that speaks to our times, okay? And then we're going to ask God to plant his truths so clearly in our mind that you will never be fooled by a clever counterfeit. Amen. All right? Uh, and, I, and I have a challenge with this one because I see in our church today we have many persons who are being fooled yes. Yes. By, by, by the little, the little mm -hmm. new things yes. that are coming about. Mm -hmm. And then we say we're going to express to God our decision to trust him, to guide you into all things, and to keep you from the dangers of false prophets. Amen. We don't want to be led astray, brethren. We want to be led in the path of God. Amen. All right? So let's come in our circle. We're going to sing that song um, again. Uh, we try to touch the Lord as we pass by the little chorus we sang earlier this week. And we're going to come into our circle. Come into our circle, brethren, as we sing. And we're going to pray this morning. And I'm uh, going to take the prayer requests at this time. Yes. And those of you who have special prayer requests and you want the Lord to do something extraordinary for you, yeah, come in the middle of the circle, and uh, we're going to call on God for those requests. Is that all right? Amen. Well, the heart is also here, and he's going to sit down in the middle too. So let's come in the circle, brethren. Let's come in the circle, and we're going to take a moment just to hear the prayer requests. All right? And we're going to pray for those who want to come in the middle. You can come in the middle, and let's let's connect the circle. Don't, don't let the circle be broken. Don't let the circle be broken. For those who want to be in the middle, come in the middle. Okay? And, 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 and that's the care purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Just this, just mm -hmm. you calling, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you this morning for us to pray in this manner is an answer to our prayer. And to pray for this to happen. That we be called in the circle of those with a special need or desire of prayer. Yes. Yeah. So this in itself this morning is an answer to our prayer. In addition to that, I brought along my little prayer box that has some special requests in it, and I'm lifting it before the Lord and asking the Lord to be like to in prayer that God will continue to answer. Amen. Anybody else? My special prayer is for my daughter to return. Pray that Amen. she starts with Amen. Thank you. 